Hey guys, Kevin Shaw here, Editor-in-Chief of Mopar Connection Magazine. We're in Fairmont, Georgia, here at Herb's Parts, and we are walking his massive field. He's got over 250 cars. Some of them are a lot nicer than others. Some of them could really be built into awesome projects. We're gonna take you through everything. Mike has given us the full tour, so definitely stay tuned. This is gonna be a long video. We're gonna show you a lot of really cool stuff, and I think you'll really like it. Hey guys, real quick, we got a whole mess of new Mopar Connection Magazine t-shirts for sale. They're up here at the Mopar Connection store. We're gonna put the link up in the corner and we have some really cool designs. The first one is my favorite and this is called the Order of the Big Block. And as you can see, you're getting the full rotation of the Big Block firing order right here on your back. And in case you forget, you can have your buddy turn around and you can set your firing order the right way and not mess up. Second, we've got the what does Mopar mean to you? And it's a whole script of different definitions that have been some of the most popular ones that we've seen over the years. It's not all of them, but it's a snapshot of some of the best ones. So show your loyalty to Mopar by wearing it loud and proud. Grab yours at the store today. We'll put the link up in the corner. So I ran into Mike at the Indy Chrysler Performance Trade Show and Swap Meet. And we were talking about our 70 Fury convertible, Marsha. He says, well, I got a bunch of parts and I've got a bunch of convertibles. You should come and check them out. So sure enough, came down to Fairview and I'm checking them out. In fact, we got a couple Furies right here. We're gonna walk you around. This is his C body and his convertible section. As you can see, we're looking at a really rough 70 Fury 3 convertible. Woo! This poor thing has been used and abused. Now we got another 70 up in front. All right, white with blue interior. Here we are. Oh, it's got 383 callouts on the hood. Very cool. All right. Engine's still in it. Ugh. This boy took a big hit. Jeepers creepers. Oof. That poor thing. That poor thing. That's rough. The ground is a little uneven. I've stepped in a couple <laughs> gopher holes already. Careful they're not snake holes. Man. Newports, Belvedere's, Cornet, another Fury. Hey, that's a Chrysler 300. Let's go check out the 300. Oh, <laughs> speaking of holes, I just stepped right in one. Oh, another Fury. Looks like a Fury 2. Is that right? Yeah, Fury 2. Oh, someone was a demolition car. Look at that, someone was a derby car. That's no fun. I should have worn a long sleeve shirt. <laughs> oh man, look at this. Oh, I love these cars. I know, a lot of you guys think I'm crazy, but I love these cars. Hideaway headlights, 440. Lots of times bucket seats with a floor shift. All right, that had the buddy seat. Man, I really do love the 69 through 71 300s. Convertible is even better. They just look like a big 70 Charger to me. I mean, even the taillights kind of remind you of a Charger. You know, the long strip with the wraparound bumper. I love them. Man alive. Yeah. Gosh. That's a big hit right there. Yeah, 440. There she is. My goodness. It's a lot of pine needles. 74 Ram Charger in orange with white interior. Oh my gosh. I've been looking for a 74 or 75 for at least five years. 
he said the exact same thing so i don't think he'd be willing to sell it but oh my gosh i want this truck so bad i want to build just like a total apocalypse bug out vehicle with this thing oh man i want it oh i want it i want it i want it oh look at that thing that is so awesome i'm gonna get covered in briars <laughs> oh, they're tearing they're tearing my shirt <laughs> oh my gosh oh, i want this truck so bad white buckets look at that four-wheel drive wood grain dash oh my gosh what is it gonna cost to get this truck all right mr wasp oh it's got a it's got a block heater <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right, here we go. Had to get had to put the camera down to get the hood open. All right. Oh good. It's a big block. Probably a 400. Looks like a 400. Yeah. Oh my gosh. 4x4, four 400 big block. Power steering, power brakes. Uh, I can't believe how much I want this truck. <laughs> I really, I really can't believe how much I want this truck. Oh. Oh my gosh. Oh. Needs a little bit of body work. That's okay. That's okay. Certainly not a deal breaker. I mean, this thing's reasonably straight, especially for being out in Georgia. Oh, I can't believe how much I want this stinking truck. <laughs> oh, the red and white just... It's a creamsicle. I love it. Totally love it. Totally, totally love it. All right, yeah. Wheel wells rotted out. Quarters rotted out. Rocker. Lower fender. That's not bad. That's not bad. It's a truck. Trucks, trucks live hard lives, but they're hardy. All right, this is just one section. This is where he has most of his C bodies and his convertibles. We'll go further up the hill. He says a good portion of the yard is divided by bodies. The further I go up the hill, I'll see more. And, uh, oh, hey, look at you. Look at you, Mr. Dodge. Got ourselves a Monaco convertible. What year is that grill? Is that 70? 71? Yeah, look at that. 67 satellite. Drop top. I don't know. I like the Monaco's. I've seen some Monaco's, but they just don't have the lines that the 300's do. Yeah, let's go for a walk. 70 satellite. Rampage. <laughs> let's check out the rampage. Hey, interior. Interior is pretty straight. I mean, it's all together. Stick shift car. Very cool. Nah, it's a straight little truck. That'd be a good little shop truck. 
come on, man. Look at that little guy. Looks like it was a military truck. Marine Corps sticker. And it's all drab green. Probably not, but whatever. Uh-oh. <laughs> Fury four-door wagon. Make a, <laughs> make a Christine wagon. You have to beat that roof out, though. That is, uh, that's a heck of a rain collector right there. There we go. New Yorker. Oh, I'm tempted to go every direction. This is terrible. Look at this Dodge. Man. It's like a 57 or a 58. Admittedly, kind of suck identifying a lot of my mid mid to late 50s cars look at this tree look at the tree growing out of a roadrunner <laughs> if you can get the tree out without crushing any cars it's yours <laughs> that thing is <laughs> that is a permanent fixture okay no vin can't check the vin bucket seat car Four, four speed bucket seat car. Holy cow. Holy cow. 69 Roadrunner. Someone put a stripe on it. Obviously, stripes didn't belong on Plymouth, but holy cow. Originally green. You can see in the door jam. Original green car, bucket seat. Yeah, bucket seat. Four speed. No AC. Holy cow. Oh man. I don't know where I wanna go next. I mean, all right, come on, let's go look at a Barracuda. 383 Barracuda. Holy cow, 69 383 Barracuda, automatic car. Poor thing is just beat to death. It needs everything. It just needs everything. Oof, originally gold, or at least gold interior. Maybe it was white with tan interior. Yeah, I wonder. <laughs> Check out the engine. Oh, engine department's painted too. Yeah. Maybe it, I think it was white with tan or gold interior. Man. Whew. Another C body. Boy, if you guys are just looking for a big block that you need to build. This Polara, you can just pull this right out. Holy cow. Lots of engines. I mean, no shortage of engines. There you go. <clears throat> wow. That is a rough outcome. For this CUDA. Looks like a 72, maybe 73. Yikes. That poor guy is done. Kind of sad. Another e body. We got a, oh, we're in the e body section, aren't we? Okay. Yeah. We are in the e-body section. Boy. You want some high back bucket frames, you can get them here. For sure. Not much left. 
We got a whole row of e-bodies right up here. Let's just slip in the middle. Looks like a 73 Challenger. Got some Craigers. If you can find a set, they're yours. <laughs> Come get them. Man. It's really just for picking, I think. It's really just for picking them over. I don't think you're going to find a decent... Well, hey. Look at this. 69 Notchback Barracuda. Nice little coupe. Obviously needs front clip. I mean, it's a bare body. You'd be starting from scratch. That guy hit a pole. Oh my. That dude hit a pole. And he hit a pole with some speed. That's the stinking grill. It's just showing all of the paint has come off. Yeah, that's just the fiberglass grill insert. My mistake. I just never seen it without any sort of treatment. Never, you know, I've never seen it without any paint or any primer on there. Man, it pushed everything back. Look how far back that engine is pushed. Oh man, that dude hit. That dude hit hard. Wow. That's brutal. Another Chally. My goodness. Let's see if the door opens. I've got thorns and thistles. No way. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that door's stuck. That ain't moving. Any keystones. Or at least they're knockoff keystones. Ah, core support's laid over. These are just really... These are just really rough. Jeez Louise. It's hard to know which direction to go. Look at that. They just sawzalled this thing. They sawzalled the heck out of this. Wow. My goodness. There we go. We got some more. Hey. Slant 6 Barracuda. Tan interior or white interior. Looks like it was tan. So it was camel tan interior. Man. Straight 6 Barracuda. B5 Blue Challenger. Gosh. To think what these cars were new. <laughs> I think this one wins. This one wins for the least amount of car remaining. I don't think I could even identify what, what this was. Besides being a besides being a challenger. Wow. There ain't much left of this one. This B5 Challenger is almost as bad. Well, here's a 70. Looks like it's in B7 blue, the dark blue. Oh, they just... You got to think, the years before you had Auto Metal Direct where you could call up and get whatever you needed you had to come here with a sawzall or a cutting torch and find some decent parts and cut them out of solid cars we're in the a body section now that's for sure 
Oh boy, if you're looking for a good demon or duster clone, that's probably not going to be the way to start. <laughs> but you might be able to find a decent one in here. Oh boy. Yeah. That real pale ice blue. That baby blue with blue interior. Let's see what we got over here. Swingers and start sports. Another slant. I reckon a lot of them are going to be slants. Probably a fair guess. And most of them, are, hey, we got a 340 over here. 340 duster. Let's go take a look. 68 GT. I wonder what it came with. Well, right now it's got a tree in it. It's got a big tree in it. Holy cow. <laughs> I just can't <laughs> wrap my head around these trees sticking out. Okay, it's not a... It's like a 74. 73 or 74. Okay. But it is a 340. Yep. All right. It's just funny to see these chargers in with, a, you know, a, a full yard of classic Mopars and you're starting to see, well, I hate to say it, but 18 year old chargers, 17, 18 year old chargers. 300M, Dodge Intrepid, another three, another 300, Cab Forward, remember Cab Forward? I remember Cab Forward, another 74, Seventy-three, seventy-four. If I'm getting my year right, you dark guys might be mad at me. I apologize. I mean no offense. For whatever reason, instead of going A body, I went C body. <laughs> I'm starting to really love the C bodies. Look at these A's though. Looks like a 68 Valiant. There you go. I remember back at Mopar Muscle when Randy Bullock built his refrigerator white 67 Valiant. He loved that car. I think he still got it. He's got like a 408 or a stroked out small block in it. Yeah, I think he still got that car. I hope he does. I knew how much he loved it. Okay. Another notchback 68 Barracuda. Oh, you might have been something. That well, looks like butterscotch yellow with a side stripe. Yep. It's a real deal duster. It's probably a gold duster, if anything. Just missing the fenders. It's a gold duster, I bet. Let's see if the door's open. Oh, look at the interior. Look at the pattern. Isn't that cool? My backpack just slipped off my shoulder. Here we go. Look at this interior. Automatic car. But it was a gold duster. That's for sure. Dang, how neat. 
How neat. Slant 6 car. Oh, it's just full of briars. Uh, core support's laid in. That means it took a hit. Oh, goodness. How fun would it be to build a gold duster? That'd be a cool car. Well, if you guys like vintage Barracudas, that one is rough, but big old aquarium Barracuda. I think we came in just one row south of this. Or no, we came in one row above it. Because there's the tree with the Roadrunner. The treed in Roadrunner. Got another Plymouth wagon. Very cool. The long roof cars, I'm telling you, that's gonna be the next big thing, guys. I think a lot of folks are gonna jump on the long roof cars. I mean, look at this thing. What a tank. I love it. What a neat piece of styling. I mean, it's a family wagon and it's got more style than any car out today. I mean, this, look at the curves and the compound curves and the chrome and the bright work. And then you look at the stupid cyber truck. I mean, come on. I'd rather have this in a heartbeat. Look at this Cornette four door. I mean, come on, this car is artwork. The shape and the detail of this thing. Oh my gosh. I mean, this was just a family sedan. You know, grandpa would drive the kids to church on Sunday in this thing. And it's got a thousand times more style than anything out today. What a shame. What a shame. Look at that old Plymouth. That old Plymouth coupe. Or that, would they call that a salon? Oh, look at the hood. Look at the split hood. Ho, ho, ho. What a neat detail. Oh, the split on it. Wow, look at the horns on this guy. Ha, <laughs> ha. That is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, let's get the camera in. You guys can make that out. Some of you historians will be able to tell me more about this car than I can. This is great. Holy cow. What a neat piece. Where's Steve Magnante when we need him? Actually, Steve's getting a lot better. I just saw a recent video, so very happy to report that Magneto Steve is doing a lot better these days. Wish him a happy recovery. I would love to do a little bit of a crawl with him. Look at that dashboard. Wow. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look at this. Look at the Plymouth sailing ship Look at the sails on the boat how cool is this how totally cool is this wow i guess any bitty piston <laughs> i have expected to see a body of a gangster in the back seat <laughs> Look at this little tiny guy. Well, I, I see your problem here. You ain't got no compression. <laughs> wow, what a neat car. Everything you did with this car would have to be by hand. There is just no, there, ain't, there is no aftermarket support for this car, but who cares? Man. How totally cool is this thing? 
Well, gonna have to fix that, fix that wheel well. My goodness. All right, let's get going. Oh, four door Dodge. Let's see what the uh, trim is. It should be a call out. Not here. Oh, there it is, there it is. Around the corner, it's a 330. 330 Dodge four door. That is a budget family car right there. All right, here we go. Lots of Barracudas. Oh, look at this. 70 Coronet four-door. Yes, sirree. Missing some parts. All right. Got some dusters. Got some darts. Another Valiant. Oh. 69 Coronet. 69 Coronet. I'm not going to lie. The only other car that I want besides my Charger to keep full time is I want to build a, B3, a B5 Blue A12 clone tribute. Not a... Not a not an A12 that would fool anyone, but kind of an A12 tribute car. Black steel wheels, widen the rear wheels a little bit. Mini Tubbit. With just a 69 Super B, white interior, B5 blue, white stripe. This is a this was a B5. This was a B5 car with white interior. I mean, I know it needs floors. I mean, it's it is an incomplete car. Don't get me wrong. Look at the bulge hood. Were you a B? Were you a B? I don't see no stripe. Come on, sweetheart. No, you weren't a B. You would have had the rally dash. Yeah, you were just an automatic. With a bulge hood. Oh, charger. Richard Petty charger. There you go. 68 Roadrunner. Or at least a satellite. Very cool. Whew. Aquarium Barracuda with the glass still in it. That's actually, that's actually a pretty decent starter. You know, you could probably find fenders and a front clip around here if you spent half a day like I did. This might be a good starter car. Hey, for you guys who like these Barracudas, that might be a good starter car. Oh, we got more B bodies up here. We might take that row next. Okay, let's do A bodies. Swinger. Couple more dusters. GT Dart. There you go. Let's see if the engine's still in it. Yes, sir, Bob. Little 318. There you go. Still got the GT tags on it. And a whole lot of body filler. Oh, yeah. Actually, look at that. That's fiberglass fiber. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, you've... You've been, uh, you've been repaired, my friend. Charger. What remains of a charger grill. 
I should say what remains of a 68 Charger. Ugh. Yikes. That's my best Krusty the Clown impression. Ugh. That's, oh, sweetheart. You've had a tough go. Another 68 Roadrunner. Well, not Roadrunner, obviously, sorry. I keep saying Roadrunner. Roadrunner is my default. It should be Satellite or Belvedere. <laughs> That's not fair to you Satellite guys. I just keep calling everything a Roadrunner. I look at that egg crate grill and I immediately go, Roadrunner. There we go. Got a Polara, Satellite. You guys want to make some late 70s police cars? There you go. Hill Street Blues. <laughs> make some police cars. Ooh, I want to go up that row. Oh, look at this. Petty Blue Charger. Well, it's not Petty Blue. I shouldn't say that. That baby blue. 383 car. I'll tell you what, guys. I said it earlier, and I'll say it again. Those first generation chargers, they are an untapped. Here's another one. Here we got a whole bunch. Oh, we got an RT Coronet. Very cool. RT Coronet. 67. First year of the RT. Man. Oh, someone cut the four speed hump out of it. It was a four-speed 440 car. Here's our rough 68 Charger. It was just a 318 car, but still. Man, hate to see it. Okay. Looks like a 71. 71 satellite or maybe a GTX. I don't know. Well, you got the red hubs. I mean, four wheel drum, manual brake, power steering. Yeah. Blue interior. Belvedere. Four door Belvedere. Got a wagon back there oh 69 GTX very very hurt 69 GTX <laughs> final top car <coughs> automatic All right. oh boy well, thankfully, AMD makes every scrap of sheet metal you're going to need for that car. You might have some luck. Oh, boy. Chrysler. Is that a Cordova? Is this a Cordova? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I will get into the Malays era, the Ford and Carter era of the of uh, Mopars. I just don't know if it. I have it in me. <laughs> Roadrunner. Ooh, sixty-nine four-door satellite. There you go. Magnum. Very cool. Post. 70 satellite post car. Huh. 318. Automatic. K 
camel tan interior. Funny. Funny. I don't think I've seen a post satellite. I don't, I shouldn't be surprised by it, but I just don't think I've seen one. At least, you know, built and regularly driven, that's for sure. Yikes. This poor satellite Belvedere. That's a, that's a hard life. Oh, wood paneled wagon. Got a woody wagon with a cargo rack. Let's go up one row. I think we're in the sea bodies over here. We got some full size Chryslers too. Let's see what we got here. That looks like an old hot rod. A little bullet tip. A little chrome, chrome bullets on the hood. Look at the Royale. <laughs> I know it's not Royale, it's Royal. But that's funny. I love this stuff. All right. Imperial. Let's see what else we got here. Now this is a pretty solid New Yorker. Big old four-door gangster car. Wow, I shouldn't say that. Oh, it's a Brome. Look at that. A New Yorker Brome. Wow. Look at the two-tone interior. That's pretty wild. Look at the engraving, the embossing around the wood. Power windows, okay. Wow. Gold emblem. Gold emblems with metallic green paint. Funny. A lot of Plumas. A lot of Polaris. Monaco. Imperial. Oh boy, look at you. Look at you. Big old wing. Virgil Exner was the designer. Virgil Exner. I don't know why I'll always remember that name, but I will always remember Virgil Exner. Designing those 50s and early 60s Chryslers and different Mopars. Look at that big old Imperial. Can you imagine leaning over that fender, trying to work on it? <laughs> Oh, you'd be doubled over half the time. Okay, I think we've been here. When you had Imperial and DeSoto as their own separate brands, Chrysler, Dodge, Plymouth, DeSoto, and Imperial, yeah, you have so many different makes and models of cars, I don't think I could begin to identify as many as some other guys could. But look at the wings on some of these guys. Holy cow. The styling on these cars is just out of this world. 1950s really were a high point in American design. You just can't you can't look at these cars and not recognize it. You'd be blind as a bat. Just the detail, the intricacy. It's what made Detroit for these cars. Once we've forgotten 
how to make cars with style. And it was all downhill from here. Look at this wrecker. Woo! You're a hoss. Look at this guy. <laughs> oh man. Charger and a satellite over there. But this is a monster. I love it. Let's go check out some more B-bodies. Got another 60, 69 Coronet. A little rougher than the last one. Oh yeah, got totally pushed in. Yeah, got totally pushed in. Yikes. All right, oh, 70. Coronet 440. I know I got my 70, but boy, you gotta love them if you wanna build them. Cause they got a face only a mother could love. That's just me, but. Oh, the rear Dutchman's been cut out. Gosh. All right, we got a Cornet wagon here. It's kind of fun. Cornet 568. I mean... That's not the worst. In fact, okay, yeah, quarter is caved in. You can see the quarter is caved in. But, let's see what the interior looks like. Oh my gosh. This thing's really together. I mean, Call up year one in Classic Industries. I think you'll be in good shape. They're not going to have everything you're going to need for a wagon. But they do have four-door door panels. It's just Coronet 500. White, tan interior. Wood panels. That'd be kind of a fun cruiser. Make a sleeper out of it. Funny yellow but purple on the inside well that blue this thing's got all sorts of what were you were you blue oh there's your k-frame <laughs> quarters are cut out of it door jams have been painted yellow maybe you were just pieced together I think this car lived a very hard life. Very hard life. Another 70 Coronet 500. Oh, that's a 440, excuse me. Got another row of B bodies up there. My goodness. Yeah, these rows are a little mixed up. They're not as organized as the other, as the left side, but that's okay. I don't mind one bit. 68 satellite. Yeah, plain Jane. Hard top though. Be a good Roadrunner clone. That'd be a decent Roadrunner clone, guys. Come get it before it rots into the earth. Georgia is not gentle on these cars. All right, here's where I get into this row. Got another 70 four-door. And another. Get out of here. 
<laughs> well, they got a lot of them. Look at the Super Bee. Look at the Super Bee. Another 70. This guy's got all the 70 coronets and Super Bees. How'd you get them all? Oh, that Dodge. That's funny. This would make pulling a car out kind of difficult. But if you do, I think you'll be happy. Got a lot of four doors you can pull fenders and other parts off of. 68 coronet. Four door, of course. Let's go down the middle of the tree row here. There's our wagon. Let's see what else we got here. Got a gas tank you gotta step over. Okay, that's the end of this row. You know, for a while, I thought nobody had 70 Coronet and 70 Super V stuff. I should have been talking to Mike at Herb's Parts. Would have saved myself a lot of grief. Holy cow, this guy's got more Coronets and Super Bs from 1970 than I've ever seen. It's bananas. All right, we're walking the back road right here. I think this is the end of the yard. Got a lot of New Yorkers. We got some C bodies, some B bodies. It's all kind of scatter shot back here. Well, let's go down this row and we'll see what we can find. 383 Charger. Ooh, look at the radius. <laughs> you might have been a drag car, my friend. That or someone wanted that wheel well lip and did not care what they cut up. Speaking of cut up, missing a lot. Like half. <laughs> Looks like it was R5 red or R4 red. At least that door was. And that fender. Yeah. Someone wanted that quarter bad. Took it right out of this guy. My goodness. And that is the husk of an armadillo. The vultures got to that armadillo a while ago. Ugh. Oh, we got some wagons down here. Let's see, is there a path? I think there's a path. That is not a path. Right. Got a Polara buried back here. Sport Fury. It's like a 69. Coronet wagon. Four-door New Yorker. You know, I tell people, the vast majority of these cars were either shades of gold or shades of green, and they never believe me. And I always walk yards like these and look at original cars, and that's all I ever see are these original cars. Look at that. Root beer brown, green, Okay, blue, okay, yeah, all right, blue. Burgundy, white. You're not seeing lemon twist and, you know, sublime green and hemi orange. You barely see these colors, guys. Just like the majority of cars today are silver, white, and black. Majority of cars back then 
or equally as boring. <laughs> so don't get your hopes up thinking you're gonna find a competition red Roadrunner when in reality it was probably spinach green with a green vinyl top and green interior. <laughs> Tell you what, if you want to make a 64 or 65 drag race car, there's an old 440. Make an A99 or a 990 clone, excuse me. An A990 clone, Max Wedge or Hemi. You might find a good starter here. Sport Fury. He's like a 64 or 63. Cool. Oh, we got some more. Got some more down here. There are not many complete cars. That's uh that's just the reality of it. You're not gonna see a lot of fully complete starters. We found a few but I try to keep my expectations in check when it comes to walking these kinds of yards. 71 Swinger, there you go. 69 Coronet, also kind of rough. Poor guy. A Coronet 440. Someone put aftermarket gauges in it, so they tried to hot rod it at one point. I'll show you inside. Yeah. 106 FM. Why 106? Anyone remember that radio station? Where'd they play? I don't. Don't know where it is. Help me locate it. And another New Yorker. Big four door. Tree grip right alongside it. Got a lot of wildlife. Growing up inside and around these cars. Got an e-body. Got a nice little Cuda. No tail panel. I don't think I'll be able to recognize what year it is without the tail panel. No grill, no fenders, no tail panel. It's gonna be hard for me to recognize what year it is. 69 satellite. Another 69. It's an orange. Might be a Roadrunner. I think it is a Roadrunner. The tops of the fenders are painted out. Let's take a closer look. Yeah, oh, this is a bronze car. This is like a T7 bronze. Okay. Yeah. That fender, you can see the fender is original. Originally orange with the blackout. But the rest of the car was T7 bronze. Huh. Funny. Got a pretty solid charger up there by the by the motorhome. Little Rambler wagon. <laughs> Funny. Okay. Let's see what else we've got. Oh yeah. See again, guys. I gotta say, these first generation chargers. Still can be had, you know? I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not perfect. But I mean, Fender is just a Coronet Fender. This guy's got all the bright work. Okay, there's no, there's no door button on that one. Let's see if the driver will open. Uh, 
And I mean, you know as much as I do. Oh yeah. You know as much as I do. These were super cool cars. The interiors were some of the most impressive that you saw in the 60s. With that big long center console running through with the rear buckets. You could really build one of these into a fun car. I'm a fan. Got a Fury, Ram Charger. Now we're getting into the kind of the parts bins. Lots of bumper supports, trunk lids, hoods, bumper brackets. And you're gonna see a whole mess of bumpers. I mean, just row upon row of bumpers. Let's turn the camera. Oh yeah. Wait a minute. Is that a Imperial Coupe? It looks hurt, but I just want to see. Oop. And it's a 300. It looks like a 70 or 71 300. Uh, if I found a complete one for a decent price, I think that might be the next sea body after Marsha. I don't think I'll hang on to Marsha. I'll probably end up building her up, having some fun for about a year. And then uh, we have to move on. Have to move on. Look at that Dodge wagon. Field of bumpers. Holy cow. 68. No. Are you joking? Are you joking? RM128HG. Get out of here. Oh, there's nothing in there. You can tell. There ain't nothing in there. There's no way he'd let a Hemi sit out here. Mike's not crazy. Well, he might be crazy, but he ain't dumb. He's not gonna let a Hemi sit in that car. All right, floor's been cut out. Someone grabbed the transmission hub. And he took the floor hump out. B5 Blue, 68. And it was a Roadrunner. No, it wasn't a real Hemi car, but was a four-speed car at one point, and someone did have a Hemi in it. So that's pretty cool, regardless of whether it was a numbers matching car or not. I think that's pretty awesome. I spied this little 69 Barracuda when I came in. It's a clean little car, it's totally done. But I mean, it's a straight little runner. It's got little polished black wheels with beauty rings. I wonder what do you want for it? Yeah, floor shift. Now it's, it's locked. That's rude of me to even try. I know. Yeah, it's a nice little car. My goodness. Got a pair of sea -Doo's. What's behind it? Looks like a 70, 70 satellite. 70 Roadrunner. Convertible. Oh, ho. 70 Roadrunner convertible. It's gonna need a lot of metal. My goodness. Yeah, check it out. See what the back looks like. I 
I mean, I wonder how it rotted it out. Ooh. Well, it certainly needs quarters. You're gonna need a good body, man. He's keeping this one. He's also keeping that Ram Charger, which really makes me mad because I want that Ram Charger. But I understand. It was a car he had been looking for for a long time. So good for Mike. I hope to see. I hope to see that car on the road real soon. All right. This is the. This is kind of the entrance. This is when you pull in. So we'll check out some of these cars and then we'll head back and talk to Mike. Sixty-nine Coronet. Let's see what we got. See how bad it is. 500. Okay. Lower cross brace. Old Coke glass bottle. Exception panel's gone. Roof is rotted. Hard top car. Obviously, you need a rally dash. Let's go walk through the briars again. Ow, ow, ow. Front of the fender. F other fenders rotted out. I mean, it's not the roughest. Doors, lower doors are rotted out. Floor is gone. See the passenger side. Passenger side is eaten up. Well, no floor there. See daylight. Yeah. Poor car just needs a lot. Just needs a lot. Ow, ow, ow. I am walking through a briar patch. This sucks. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I forgot how far I had to drive to get in here. There's so many, so many little cars, little patches of cars and parts. Just keeps going. This guy's got miles of cars. All right, so we weren't allowed to take a lot of footage from the inside. They kind of want to keep this stuff quiet, but Mike did want me to take a look at this 1924 Chrysler. It is literally 100 years old. In fact, when I walked onto the property, they said, I hope you're ready to put your back into it. We need to help push this up the hill. So <laughs> four of us, with the help of a quad, pushed this up the hill. This is a really neat piece of history right here that Herbs is gonna be building. And they are planning, actually probably to put it on that lift to start work on it but this is going to end up being in their new showroom that they're building and that's going to be really cool uh they bought a piece of property up in rome georgia and they're looking at having that building put up really quickly but let's do a little bit of a walk around on this 24 chrysler convertible through the wood spoke wheels what a really impressive piece where did you find it came out of philadelphia came out of philadelphia Restoration was started and got stalled and sat there for 30 years. I know nothing about this engine. Straight six. Obviously, it's a straight six. Do you know the displacement at all? I don't recall. Okay. Wow. That is just really wild. Gonna take the frame off and just nut and bolt everything, huh? Yep. All right. That's a parade car. It'll be a parade car, very good. Did they, they bondled the doors in? Yeah, I think just so they could get smooth, straight and smooth. Okay, then they were gonna open them up and, open up. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, at first I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Here's the hatter style. Yeah, there you go. 
Well, that's very cool. Look, they got pretty much everything. They got the split bonnet and look at that giant wood grain wheel. That is just solid. What a neat piece. This will be really cool, Mike. And you said it's, it's uh, how many years from your son's birthday? 70. 70 years from your son's birthday. Oh, the casting number's on the side of the engine block. Yeah, yeah. Let me show the casting number. Oh, here it is, here it is. You know what, I'm gonna get the flashlight out. There it is. 72424. Man. That's wild. Walter P. Chrysler car. Well, Mike, let me know about this 68 Imperial. Last year of the convertibles for the Imperials. Got a nice cover on there. Keep the weather out. Boy. Buddy seat. Very cool. Oh boy, what a monster. What a monster. Very cool though. I personally love the sea bodies. What are you asking? 75? All right. We'll put the number up. You guys want this Imperial convertible? Get it out of here for 75. Got a couple more Imperials out here. You said there were just a few more cars to be found on the way out. Pretty wild to see these guys all camping out in the weeds. Gosh. Man. Look at the dashboard on this. Really worth some stylish cars. Really were. So. Hideaway headlight Monaco. I always thought these were kind of cool. I always thought these were really stylish for being a big, big family four door. Yeah, hopefully you guys think so too, because I think they have some really cool style. Obviously the five mile an hour bumpers are, you know, thanks Mr. Government. Thank you California for meddling with the auto industry yeah what a neat car what a neat car so i think it's important to know that there's a lot more going on at herb's parts than what most of us might think i've known the herb's parts name for almost 30 years and this facility this is about 20 acres worth of cars and they said they've got about 600 cars here they used to have 900 but they've reduced over the years but at herbs they've got about 20 acres of about 600 cars they've got a 30,000 square foot building that they use and that's just chock full of stuff and they didn't really want me to take a lot of footage from there and that's okay i understand but the more important thing is that Herb's Parts is part of a bigger family. And that's AMS Obsolete. They have all of the NOS parts that you need if you're doing a full restoration, if you want factory correct stuff. They've got all, everything, I mean, massive, massive shelves full of NOS replacement and used parts. And a lot of really good pieces that they pulled off of some better cars. They got them on the shelves there. So AMS Obsolete is the parent company of Herbs. In addition to Herbs Parts, they also have Charger Specialties. Now I knew Charger Specialties from years ago because those were the first guys to do the electric hideaway headlight doors. And I even have those Charger Specialties doors on my own Charger. So that was really cool. 
and Charger Specialties is there, and they still fabricate all the parts, the circuit boards, all the headlight buckets, all that really cool stuff. They have Charger Specialties, they have Herb's Parts, which I'm walking right now, and of course, AMS Obsolete. So we're gonna put all that contact information up because you guys, if you're building a car, you're gonna need to hit these guys up. So there's something worth noting. Mike Carter, who bought Herb's Parts just about five years ago this summer, Mike picked up Herb's Parts to help not only organize Herb's Parts, but to expand it. The problem is, is that although this 20 acres of cars and their 30,000 square foot building is pretty big, they're outgrowing it. And so he let me know that he recently purchased a piece of property out in Rome, Georgia, and he's gonna be breaking ground on a new building, and that's gonna allow him to totally organize the inventory, bring in a bunch more employees, and really streamline the process so that any of you guys who are building cars, whether you need sheet metal, brakes, suspension, bumpers, interior, whatever they've got, which is pretty much everything, they're gonna have it and they're gonna have it at the ready. So that's something that's really exciting that you're gonna see in the next few years here at Herbs and more importantly, AMS Obsolete. Again, AMS Obsolete is the parent company of Herbs. And in addition to Herbs, you also have of course Charger Specialties and he's been eyeing a couple other companies too to help bring them in under that single umbrella. So for you Mopar guys who are looking to restore your car, there's a lot of really good stuff happening in the future. But I gotta give it up to Mike Carter and his team for letting me walk around. He kind of just gave me carte blanche to walk around the whole facility. That was really cool of him. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm still hiking around and I got a lot more to see. So guys, if you like this video, why don't you give it a like, maybe leave a comment, share it with your friends, help us grow the channel. And if you want more awesome Mopar content, why don't you check us out over at www.moparconnectionmagazine.com where new articles are written and published every single day, Monday through Friday, entirely subscription free to you. We'll see you there.